Greetings, I have another pen video for you with some new ink. Today's ink is Diartrementis Charles Dickens. The Atramentis. I always say Atramentis, but it's Atramentis. I think it's a, a beautiful combination with this pen, and they complement each other quite nicely. I enjoyed the golden brown, but something about it just didn't do it for me. So I ended up dumping the contents back into the vial and moving on to the next color. Still so far, I think my two favorites have been this, and this was wonderful with the pen, um, but maybe I'm just not in the mood for a golden brown. So today we will be reading from a book by Agatha Christie. Honestly, I don't have a favorite book from Agatha Christie. I love all of the books from Agatha Christie. I am a big fan. Uh, she is my favorite author, actually. Um, but this one is Murder on the Orient Express, and I do apologize for my abysmal Belgium and French accents, uh, but there is some dialogue, and I feel like it's necessary <laughs> to try my best to create those accents, so bear with me. It was five o'clock on a winter's morning in Syria. Alongside the platform at Aleppo stood the train grandly designated in railway guides as the Taurus Express. It consisted of a kitchen and a dining car and a sleeping car and two local coaches. By the step leading up into the sleeping car stood a young French lieutenant, resplendent in uniform, conversing with a small man muffled up to the ears of whom nothing was visible but a pink-tipped nose and the two points of an upward-curled moustache. It was freezingly cold, and this job of seeing off a distinguished stranger was not one to be envied, but Lieutenant Dubosque performed his part manfully. Graceful phrases fell from his lips in polished French. Not that he knew what it was all about. There had been rumors, of course, as there always were in such cases. The generals, his general's temper had grown worse and worse, and then there had come this Belgian stranger all the way from England, it seemed. There had been a week, a week of curious tensity, and then certain things had happened. A very distinguished officer had committed suicide, another had suddenly resigned, anxious faces had suddenly lost their anxiety, and certain military precautions were relaxed. And the general, Lieutenant Dubosque's own particular general, had suddenly looked ten years younger. Dubosque had overheard part of a conversation between him and the stranger. Ah, you have saved us, mon cher, said the general emotionally, his great white mustache trembling as he spoke. You have saved the honor of the French army. You have averted much bloodshed. How can I thank you for acceding to my request to have come so far? to which the stranger, by name Monsieur Hercule Poirot, had made a fitting reply, including the phrase, But indeed, do I re not remember that once you saved my life? And then the general had made another fitting reply to that, disclaiming any merit for the past service. And with more mention of France, of Belgium, of glory, of honor, and such kindred things, they had embraced each other heartily, and the conversation had ended. As to what it had all been about, Lieutenant Dubosque was still in the dark, but to him had been delegated the duty of seeing off Monsieur Perrault by the Taurus Express, and he was carrying it out with all the zeal and ardor before befitting a young officer with a promising career ahead of him. Today is Sunday, said Lieutenant Dubosque. Tomorrow, Monday evening, you will be in Stamboul. It was not the first time he had made this observation. Conversations on the platform before departure of a train are apt to be somewhat repetitive in character. That is so, agreed Monsieur Poirot. And you intend to remain there for a few days, I think? Mais oui, Stamboul is a city I have never visited. It would be a pity to pass through, comme ça. 
and we will leave it at that. Thank you again for watching and listening. And um, I finally have a tripod, and it's just really funny because when I filmed this little clip, I did not use it, which is quite ironic. Um, but anyways, it's nice to finally have one. I've been wanting to do that for so long now. And that's really all that I had to say. Thank you guys. Bye.